fishing is something I'll probably want to do over the weekend, right? On a boat going out to the black. <laughs> We're talking about P H I S H I N G. And I, I apologize, that joke will never get stale with a cybersecurity professional, right? 22 million spam messages emanated from Trinidad. That means it came from servers that are based or located anywhere in and around Trinidad and Tobago. What does that mean? It's a huge number. Phishing generally comes in the format of email. So that's why it's really important and it's often categorized as spam. So that's a lot of messages. Some might come to citizens of Trinidad and Tobago's inbox. And some of those messages might actually, you know, go to the rest of the world. And there are multiple reasons as to what would have caused that you know, flood of spam messages. But let's start off with defining phishing. So it's a technique, really and truly it's a technique that is not new. Uh, it's been used by hackers to trick people into performing some sort of action, which ultimately leads to you sharing some of your personal information, such as your username, passwords, credit card information even. I, I know you mentioned, you know, sometimes you, you click on a link and that's a, a telltale sign of a phishing email. Now, Phishing would have come in the form of text messages a few years back before email became as ubiquitous as it is today. And that's the most common part, you know, text and or email. So many of us would have probably received a phishing email. And just to kind of describe what it probably looked like, it looked like an email that come from a valid or a verified source. So a vendor that you're accustomed to doing business with, it could be Amazon, Netflix, or even your banks. Many local banks have had phishing emails sent to clients, which are fake emails, but they may have the bank logo and it may prompt you to do something. Generally, these phishing emails have a sense of urgency. So when you get it, you feel like you need to act almost immediately. So that's phishing, it's very common, but there are types of phishing. And you did mention AI because it's quite scary as to how AI and phishing and scam and spam and so on really and it's intertwining, making it extremely difficult, even for a seasoned professional like myself to get duped by you know, seeing something that's not real. So there's phishing, which we spoke about. There's also something called whaling, where the targets are the big fish, the CEOs, the CIOs, you know, the directors, the managing directors of companies. Uh, you know, so these emails are targeted towards these individuals because often they are the ones who would send an email saying, hey, go ahead and make this payment. Or yes, we approved this. So the hackers know to sort of put extra effort into trying to target and, you know, uh, compromise uh, someone at that level. 